Welcome back everyone to freepilotgroundschool.ca. We're on our ninth lesson of air law on flight preparation and flight plans. Hopefully you're enjoying this so far and hopefully you're noticing that the drudgery of air law is kind of starting to subside. Either that or you're getting acclimatized to it. The uh, more exciting subject, the flight operation, things like that are gonna occur later on in the ground school, but thanks a lot for still sticking by me. So in this lesson, when we talk about flight plans, we're gonna talk about flight itineraries. These are documents that we file to make sure that if we don't uh, show up when we're supposed to show up, somebody's going to come look for us. So let's talk about some interpretation. Overdue means uh, an arrival report's not filed within one hour of a flight plan estimated time arrival or 24 hours of a flight itinerary estimated time of arrival. A responsible person is somebody who will call search and rescue if you're overdue. This responsible person does not need to be of any specific age. They don't need to have a pilot's license. They can be anyone that will say, okay, if you don't show up by the, when you say you're going to show up, I'm going to call the police or I'm going to call the search and rescue people. Well, this should be pretty obvious to you, but a lot of people uh, neglect to do this. Pre-flight information, the pilot in command must be um, familiar with all available information appropriate to the flight. So this includes weather, includes what are called NOTAMs, notice to airmen, or any sort of uh, thing. Uh, let's say the airport's closed. Well, you'd have to be familiar with that too. So let's talk about a flight plan or a flight itinerary. You have to file a flight plan or flight itinerary for any flight longer than 25 nautical miles from the destination. And a flight plan is required when crossing a border. These flight plans are typically filed with the flight service station. A lot of times these days, uh, you could uh, probably the easiest thing to do would just be go online, plan.navcanada.ca, and you type in all the information and then it automatically gets filed. There's a number of standard things that are in a, a flight plan or a flight itinerary. These are listed in the Canada Flight Supplement and we're gonna go through them in a little bit. A flight plan is always filed with the flight service station or ATC. So you either call them up or like we said, we do it online, whereas a flight itinerary is filed with a responsible person. So let's say your wife or your partner or, or another pilot. The major difference is that a flight plan, you have to report back within one hour, where a flight itinerary, you report back within 24 hours. So usually when I go flying, I file what we call a flight itinerary with, uh, depends if my wife's coming with me or not. I say, okay, I'm going flying. This is where I'm going. This is what time I'll be back. And then there's an agreement, or hopefully there's an agreement that if I don't show up, my wife will actually call search and rescue. So this is how a standard flight plan form looks like. Uh, this one just happens to be issued by the FAA, so it says U.S. Department of Transportation. But if you get one from Nav Canada in, this, in Canada, they will look the same. So let's just take a look at this. The top, you don't need to worry about filling out. That uh, gets filled out uh, by uh, air traffic. Okay, let's talk about how to fill out one of these flight plan forms. So we're going to start uh, filling below this line here. So Here's this code, it's kind of typewriter. I don't know what kind of code this is, but I, I guess these people haven't really moved into the 21st century. We'll start with the aircraft identification. I'll just fill this out. H, flight rules, visual. Type of flight we can ignore. Number we can ignore. That's uh, for a formation flight, you would put, if, you're, if there's like three of you going the same spot, you put three. Type of aircraft, we'll put a C-150. Wake turbulence, L. Equipment, so there's a whole bunch of equipment codes. You can look them up in the kind of flight supplement. The ones you really need to worry about are VHF radios, V and G. You probably have an emergency transponder. Parts for aerodrome. We'll go from Thunder Bay, CYQT. And let's call it 1200 Zulu. Okay, cruising speed. N is for knots, Y N is for knots, I have no idea, that's just the way it is. N095, we're going 95 knots. If you're going in Mach speed, you would just put M, uh, Mach 77 would be M77. 
level A for altitude or FL for flight level. So let's go 4,500 feet, zero, four, five. It's 4,500 feet, you just knock a couple zeros off. Now route, this is pretty important. So you could put like the route, like a Victor Airway. And the other, or you could just write DRC. Let's, let's write DRC, that's direct. Now let's say I wanna go to Sioux Lookout. And I'm going to Sioux Lookout and I'm gonna spend some time there uh, you know, get a coffee or something like that. So I'm going to go to direct CYXL. Now I put in brackets how long I'm there. I'm going to be there 30 minutes, okay? Then I repeat the name of the airport, CYXL, and I'm going direct. Well, we're going to go direct to Winnipeg. So let's continue on. So here's the second... Uh, half of the flight plan, the lower half, we're going to destination, we'll call it Winnipeg, C-Y-W-G. Sorry about my chicken scratch here. Now total estimated time on route. So this time is the total length of the flight, including all the stopovers. So let's say it takes us three hours to fly to Winnipeg and we had a half an hour stopover. Well, we'll make that three hours, 30 minutes. Alternate aerodrome, we don't need to worry about uh, because that's for VF, or sorry, IFR, our endurance. We'll just call it four hours. We have two people on board. We have no emergency radio, but we have polar survival equipment, let's say. No life jackets, no dinghies. Aircraft color is white. Remarks, often air traffic control wants your cell phone number. So if they have to look for you, the first thing they do is uh, call your cell phone. It's usually a giveaway. Oh, we found him. He was at home. He forgot to close his flight plan. And then you put your pilot and command uh, name and license number. Let's talk about changes in a flight plan. You have to advise air traffic control of a change in a flight plan as soon as possible. So let's say in this previous example, we went Thunder Bay to Winnipeg by the Sulaco VOR. Well, all of a sudden, no, we don't want to go by Sulaco. We want to go direct. We let air traffic control know right away so that if we go missing, they're not going to sue lookout and starting searching for us there. They know that we're somewhere directly in between. When you land at an airport uh, on a flight flight, you have to have uh, give ATC an arrival report. You have to let them know to close your flight plan. Usually they do this uh, automatically. When you clear uh, the runway, you just ask them to close the flight plan and they know what time you landed and they would close it. However, if you are somewhere where there's no air traffic control, you will call flight service uh, by telephone, uh, the number 1-866-WX-BRIEF. Then you just follow the prompts and then you talk to a flight service specialist, you tell them your registration, where you landed and what time you landed. An arrival report is filed, which closes your flight plan. If you fail to do this, which lots of people unfortunately do, well, they're gonna start looking for you. First, they're gonna call your cell phone. Then they're going to call the person uh, who you may have listed as a responsible person. Hey, have you heard from this guy? And if they still haven't found you, well, they're gonna call search and rescue and look for you. And uh, if they find your airplane all safe and they wasted a few thousand dollars sending a search and rescue airplane to find you, they're probably not going to take too kindly to that. So let's briefly talk about overdue aircraft. So this is when the responsible person has to advise somebody uh, that the aircraft that they are responsible for has not arrived. So they can call flight service, they can call ATC, they can call Joint Rescue Coordination Center, you can even call the police actually because uh, they usually have those numbers anyway. But if you make somebody a responsible person, make sure they know who to call when you go missing. Now in Canada, we have a number of search and rescue facilities uh, located at military bases, Victoria, Comox, Winnipeg, Quebec City, Trenton, Greenwood, Halifax, St. John's, and Gander. Okay, that concludes this lesson. We're now going to uh, just quickly review and get on to our sample questions. So quick review, a flight plan is required beyond 25 nautical miles into the United States or the Air Defense Identification Zone. Overdue is defined as one hour after the ETA on a flight plan or 24 hours for a flight plan. You have to make amendments as soon as possible and advise ATC or Joint Rescue Coordination Center if the aircraft is overdue. Our first question, if a flight plan is not filed, the flight itinerary must be filed, A, for flights proceeding 25 nautical miles or more from the point of origin, B, only for flights in sparsely settled areas, C, 
for flights destined to land at aerodromes or places other than the points of origin, D for all flights. So you should know 25 nautical miles as we just uh, discussed. After landing from a VFR flight for which the flight plan has been filed, the pilot shall report the arrival to the air appropriate ATS unit within. And remember, it is 60 minutes. You have to call and file an arrival report within one hour, or they're going to start looking for you. Where there is a deviation from a VFR flight plan, ATC shall be noticed of such deviation, A, as soon as possible, B, within 10 minutes, C, within 30 minutes, within 60 minutes after landing. So the correct answer is going to be as soon as possible. Where no search and rescue initiation time is specified in a flight itinerary, when shall the pilot report to the responsible person? And this question goes back to most correct answer. So let's just work our way through. Within one hour after expiration of the estimated duration. So that's incorrect because that's for a flight plan. In this case, we're talking about a flight itinerary. Within one hour after landing, uh, no, because the person might not be, if they haven't landed, uh, they crashed. Well, that's not correct. Within 24 hours after the expiration of the estimated duration of the flight specified in the flight itinerary. So that sounds pretty right, like 24 hours. Well, let's go to the, read all the answers. See if there's a more correct answer. D, as soon as practical after landing, but no later than 24 hours after the last reported ETA. So that's going to be the correct answer because you don't wanna necessarily wait 24 hours after you landed, get the person all worried before you call them. No, as soon as you can, but it can't be more than 24 hours. Okay, with regard to a flight itinerary, the responsible person means someone who A, has agreed to report the aircraft overdue. So yeah, that's correct, that's what it is. Is 18 years of age or older? No, nope, that's not a requirement. Holds an aeronautical license? No. Nope. D has agreed to report the arrival of the aircraft. No, you don't need to report the arrival. You just have to report if it's overdue. Correct answer is A. Where a VFR flight plan has been filed, an arrival report must be filed by the pilot. A, by advising an ATS unit. B, at each intermediate stop and then reopen on takeoff. C, by parking the aircraft in close proximity to the control tower, no. D, except as at airport served by control tower, in which case the power will automatically close the flight plan. So the correct answer is A, you need to advise an ATC unit. Okay, let's talk about estimated time on route. So if you're going from A to B an hour and 15 minutes, you stop for 30 minutes and then an estimated time from B to C one hour and 20 minutes, what do you put in the elapsed time box of the VFR flight plan? Well, you add up the total amount of flight time, including the stopover time. One hour 15 plus 30, that's one hour 45, uh, plus one hour 20, that's three hours and five minutes. If I add that up, the answer is C, three hours, five minutes. When filing a VFR flight plan with an intermediate stop, the total elapsed time to be entered is the total. So we just discussed this. It's the total time for all legs, including the intermediate stop. So the correct answer, A. How is the intermediate stop indicated on the flight plan form for a VFR flight? A, by including duration of the stop, in elapsed time boxes, ATC automatically checks between the points. No, they don't. Same as any other VFR flight plan if the intermediate stop does not exceed 30 minutes. No, by repeating the name of the intermediate stop and its direction in the root column, by simply indicating intermediate stop and other information. Correct answer is C, by repeating the name in the root column. 